Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on the world of big data. Today, my guest is from InfoChimps. We have the CEO of the company, Jim Cascade. Jim, welcome to the show today. Thanks a lot, Rich. Pleasure uh, to be part of this. Thanks for inviting us. Well, 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 thanks for coming on. You know, you guys are all about big data and the cloud, and uh, that's what our listeners are, are looking towards as they move to this wonderful world. So uh, why don't we go into your presentation, Jim, and then we'll do a, a Q&A at the end. That sounds perfect. Okay, so um, when you're looking at our kind of intro slide, uh, Rich, I think, uh, you know, start with, you know, most people get hung up with the definition of big data, you know, so we, can, we usually like to try to start with what our view of big data is and then talk a little bit about uh, what InfoChips is. So as part of our agenda today, we'll, we'll get into the history of InfoChips and then I'll, I'll dive right into what InfoChips does in terms of its cloud services for big data. Present maybe a, a single use case that we can talk to and then how do we actually deploy our analytic services our big data services, one of the various deployment models, and ultimately um, what it means to building intelligent applications or analytic or data-driven applications. So just to kind of kick things off, you know, big data, a lot of people think it's big, right? What's your definition of big? Is it uh, gigabytes, terabytes, petabytes? You know, most people think of big data as a, in, in the terms of volume. I think generally speaking, our view of big data is you know, basically when your data infrastructure doesn't allow you to do what you need to do to be able to turn data into value, you know, bringing data to uh, a position where you can leverage such to create revenue. And that means a lot of things to us and our customers. It, it does mean lots of volume, um, you know, petabytes of volume definitely. It also means high, uh, high rates of data consumption. So real-time data in terms of its velocity is is also by itself uh, very challenging and is, is part of the big data space as it's been defined. And, and then uh, lastly, you know, we are looking at a lot of new data sources. It's not just about structured data in a relational database or just about sales transactions that are, you know, that are transactional, but it's also about, you know, data that's unstructured, that comes from devices or web logs or places that you didn't normally um, consider a source because, frankly, it was just too expensive to, uh, to gather that data and analyze it. So when you're looking at what uh, has been defined by Gartner and others, you know, in terms of three axes, volume, velocity, and variety, those three things make up a, a whole new space of data that can be consumed, stored, and analyzed for big businesses and ultimately can't be serviced by traditional infrastructure. And that's, you know, to start with, frankly, our you know, our view of big data as well. And as a company, we're providing essentially the ability to deploy some very sophisticated analytics, analytic services against any and all um, of data, data variety, velocity, and volume uh, for our customers in a way that's so easy to consume, so quick to deploy, so, so enabling uh, for new applications. Uh, that uh, enterprises are able to take advantage of the same things that built up companies like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google, you know, Yahoo. So when you look to the big web-scale companies that essentially have redefined big data um, from what people thought it was a couple of decades ago to, to today, um, those big companies have created new technologies that ultimately enable transformation within any enterprise. It's just phenomenal, Rich. It's just incredible. So when we move to slide three in my deck, you know, our, you know we look at what big data is. Big data is not just the, the content that was created or the data that's created and consumed, but it's also the data about data. There's a huge amount of data that's, that's generated um, that describes the data itself. So data and metadata together um, create this kind of huge opportunity and ultimately how you analyze that data and metadata uh, is, is really what um, gets to the core ability to create value. And so when you, when you move to the next slide, we think about value, we think about creating new, a new suite of applications, a new suite of applications that are very much 
uh, data-driven, much more than um, traditional applications were. So that means taking traditional data sources, like structured data sources from your oracles of the world, your Teradata of the world, your IBMs of the world, and enhancing that maybe with new enterprise data sources that are still structured, like Salesforce.com, um, SaaS applications out there that generate data that house more data outside of the firewall, and combining that with this whole domain of unstructured, the non-traditional data sources, the data that comes from social. Most people think of social data as a great, great um, way of defining unstructured data. There are many more data sources than unstructured. It could be, you know, satellite information about cars parked in your front, you know, retail parking lot. It could be sensor data, you know, around um, various sensors that you've put on trucks and a fleet or what have you. There's, you know, a lot of different new data sources that when you combine those, you take enterprise data, you combine it with non-traditional data, you got to enable it. That data has to be able to enable those data-driven applications. So we think of our ability to create the new generation of data um, applications as a bunch of plus signs and an equal sign. Very simply, I got to add a couple data sources together, maybe a dozen of them, and I got to somehow get them to equate to new intelligence that's represented in applications that can allow you to take action in your business. So when you when you think about um, InfoChimps, you look at our next slide in slide five. You know, InfoChimps is essentially a cloud. And what does that mean? Um, well, we're we're basically providing a set of resources and services that you can consume on demand. Um, as a, you know, a true definition of a cloud service provider, we are one. But we're a purpose-built cloud for big data. And for us, we're delivering a lot of these sophisticated uh, analytic services that have been created by these web scale companies as a commercially well-packaged and integrated solution so that we can provide our customers the fastest and easiest way of performing data analytics on ultimately any scale for, you know, for companies that are trying to make huge impacts. So enterprise companies, companies that are Fortune 1000. And we do that with three different cloud analytic services. One that runs against large volumes of data, provides you analytics around in a batch type of environment where you literally, you know, send the most complex analysis against, against maybe, you know, years of data and you wait for an answer, you might go get a cup of coffee for that. And that's done through our cloud called Cloud Hadoop, uses obviously Hadoop as a technology behind that. The second is more interactive, um, where we want to be able to discover and we want to be able to explore, maybe look at things that are happening and trending over the last day or week or the last hour. And that's enabled by a whole suite of NoSQL technologies um, that's, that's uh, embodied as part of a cloud service we call cloud queries. So think of it, query your data and interact with it um, very quickly. It's kind of near real time, and it's a very human-oriented activity, very customer-centric. You know, the, the, the customers are very engaged. But then there's part of operationalizing analytics. And if, when you operationalize analytics, that means you can't have a human involved. You want to be able to do things in, you know, without the human. You want to be able to react to what your customers are doing quickly because time is important. And that is, you know, our real-time cloud which we call cloud stream. It leverages a streaming technology which allows us to apply analytics in memory, in motion, in real time. And that's our definition of um, our suite of cloud services. It's not just Hadoop as a service. It's much more broad. And we find that these three analytic services are required to address any and all business problems. If you want to have a place where you want to do a sandbox kind of um, environment where you're just trying to discover or you Exploring, you may need to just use Hadoop, but if you want to really solve a business problem, that means you're going to have to operationalize, which means you're going to have to ultimately have all three of these. So, stepping to the next slide, Rich, on slide six, since that's you know that's kind of our definition of big data, and that's our um, you know our suite of cloud services at a high level. How did we get here? You know, what was the history of InfoChips? A lot of people know of our brand um, because it dates back quite a long time ago. You know, we began our work in 2005. The founders of InfoChimps began at the University of Texas in Austin, 
And um, we did a lot of research, you know, and basically large-scale data, distributed systems, and analytics. And the distributed computing and data analytics evolved using Hadoop. And this was like the beginning of when Hadoop wasn't even called Hadoop. It was called Nutch. Um, I don't know how many people know the history of it, but that was back in 2005 uh, when Google offered up, you know, insights into how they built their infrastructure and, and Hadoop was born. We were born as a company. And we've been ahead of the industry in terms of taking cutting-edge technologies as they've been introduced and using those and becoming experts at those technologies and then making them commercially available to our customers. And we've grown as a company really by being thought leaders in the big data space from the time we were born. You know, so when we look at when InfoChips was first launching its Hadoop-based Hadoop product, it was even before Cloud Era was founded. And when we launched um, our most recent streaming product, it's long before any commercial vendor of the technology that powers that uh, cloud streams, which is Storm, which is what powers Twitter. We're the first to offer up commercial solutions to these disruptive technologies, and we have been since we were you know, first uh, conceived. So we've taken that um, to the next level. So when we look through um, slides seven and eight, I just want to dig a little deeper into what our cloud services are. In slide eight, you know, essentially starting with cloud streams. Again, the real-time solution allows uh, our businesses to essentially employ the analytics um, without a human involved. And that means, what is real-time? Real-time is sub one second. It's like 50 milliseconds. Applying analytics and transformations to your data to, that, that essentially are required to feed those analytic models in memory in real time. And you can think of things like, I want to act on clickstream data to be able to offer you up something you're interested in on, you know, interested in purchasing based on what you're surfing for right now, as an example. Cloud queries, as I mentioned, you know, interacting with the data, maybe maybe billions of rows of data uh, that you can question and get response to instantly. And then finally, that multiple year kind of, you know, very, very um, uh, complex, heavy analytics using Hadoop. And we've basically taken these three data analytic capabilities and through our own internal development of what we call kind of command and control, we're able to deploy thousands of nodes of analytic compute capacity um, for our customers with extreme simplicity. And then we take that kind of infrastructure as a service capability that we've made easy for our cloud operation staff. We bring that to our customer and say, hey, why don't you focus on developing the application? We'll focus on just making it, making the infrastructure work. Data goes in, right things happen, is what our founder and CTO, Flip Cromer, always says. And that requires giving our application developers the tools. So cloud APIs and tools are an important part of our business, which I'll go into in a little bit. So let's talk about you know, each of these things. Uh, looking at slide nine, how does this typically work? You know, variety, velocity, and volume. You know, we take any input source. I don't care what type of data it is, because we have experience in managing and, and, and hosting thousands of data sets, which is kind of what our original business model was around a data marketplace. We take any data input, and we use our CloudStream solution to basically say, okay, what do we want to do with that data? Do we want to send it straight into the applications with some analytics? Do we want to use it to feed into cloud queries to allow uh, business analysts to, to analyze trends, or do we want to send it into Hadoop, or all of the above? And typically, our customers want to do all of the above because they're looking at solving really business, real business problems. So when we look at slide 10, here's how it works. You know, cloud streams essentially takes any and all of these data sources. It listens for activities uh, in real time, and it does um, data conversion on the fly and sends it into a queue. And that queue allows us to take asynchronous data sources um, of various types and velocities and really sync them up and, 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 and guarantee delivery uh, to, to our internal data source or the application. Um, so that's a key part of our technology stack, that we're leveraging some technology that powers LinkedIn. From there, we do the in-stream processing. And we have a linearly scalable uh, topology that allows us to take advantage of 
of cloud infrastructure and scale that to any 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 type of analytic uh, that you want to deploy, and then again feeding into either data stores or the application, and of course archiving for, for folks who want to have a disaster recovery and high availability. When you look at slide 11, cloud queries is similar in the sense that you know we are taking uh, multiple data sources and they're coming from our cloud streams product and we're allowing our customers to apply structure and be able to query that um, these um, data models based on their business problem so define your use case your business problem and and define that translates into a data model that uh, housed within our cloud query service that then feeds your application again that data can be used to feed Hadoop it is also archived um, ad hoc is important. People need to, you know, ask questions of the data uh, even after they define their use cases. And then last but not least, in slide 12, Hadoop um, as a service is something that a lot of people are jumping into. And by itself, it's not, you know, you know the only thing that you'll need, but uh, definitely a key, key component. Cloud Streams, again, feeds that in. Um, we have, um, you know, again, a key part of taking uh, asynchronous data into a queue and then moving that into the Hadoop file system, what we do is we tailored our, our cloud Hadoop so that we can scale up different Hadoop configurations very, very quickly. So again, infrastructure made easy. We essentially say infrastructure is code. Um, we can define in a, you know, in, a, in a data flow what we need a, our infrastructure to look like, and that translates into the infrastructure just simply by using very, very high-level um, um, representations of that infrastructure with our cloud service configuration command and control. So Hadoop allows you to analyze, again, high volumes um, and very complex questions asked of those you know, high volumes of data. And then ultimately in slide 13, we bring all three of these cloud services together and we allow you to build your applications with the seamless use, use of these three cloud services the key thing is on any cloud infrastructure, most importantly, on Fortune 1000 infrastructure, meaning I need to have my data secure. It's got PII or HIPAA compliance regulation, and I can't have it in the public cloud. Public cloud's a great place to start to do some proof of concepts, but I need it in a trusted data center or even behind my own four firewalls. Um, in my data center, and this is an important part of being able to service Fortune 1000, which we we support today and focus on. So, Virtual Private Cloud is really our focus in a suite of uh, Tier 4 data centers where our customers have entrusted their data infrastructure, and we sit right next to that data. So when we look at moving from slide 14 to 15, I wanted to give the audience a little kind of peek under the hood. What is our cloud infrastructure? What 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 does it look like? When you look at slide 15, you know, this is our, what we call our standard reference platform. It means we've taken over four years of our know-how and we've embodied it into a, an opinionated architecture, meaning we've selected the best in class uh, components and we make them work and we make them scale. And we use that um, for every customer. Every customer gets the exact same infrastructure. They may have different pieces and parts turned on and off, and they may have it definitely configured differently. But what's common across all of our customers is they get the same reference platform. So you can see here kind of a technical view of what powers cloud streams. We use Storm. We use Kafka for queuing. Um, we provide you know, our own API or native APIs into that infrastructure to provide a, a, a simplicity or flexibility and or flexibility for our application developers. And then when you look at Hadoop and our cloud streams, you can see what we've opinion what we've chosen around these. Hadoop, we, we've standardized around the Cloud Air Enterprise distribution. And for cloud streams, we're mostly using HBase and Elasticsearch for, for very large uh, big data, big table, um, you know, large structured table type queries, as well as you know, text-based search capabilities. And again, you know. APIs that allow our developers to get in through native interfaces, but more ideally, hopefully, uh, using what we have created as a, kind of a, uh, a common interface across all these infrastructure using a, 
a design specific language um, we labeled Wukong. And then ultimately our cloud command and control is what our cloud operations personnel use to make this all work without you having to worry about it to the SLA that you need. And ultimately all you really need to focus on is what we call a deploy pack. It's the configuration of your cloud, it's how what you know defines where your data sources are, um, kind of as like nouns and what kind of processors and analytics you want to define to operate against that data or nouns like verbs and how you string that all together like sentences. We make basically data analytics as simple as creating a, a sentence, you know, structuring nouns and verbs into sentences. And that's, that's, that's made easy through our deploy packs. And that's used to basically enable application developer um, agility so that you can create very sophisticated applications in 30 days versus 24 months. So let's talk about, you know, a use case, slide 16. Let's move into slide 17 as a as a as a use case example. This is uh, one of many of our customers um, that are that are basically leveraging social data um, with their own uh, internal data sources. So when you look at, you know, let's take um, let's say Oracle and DB2 and SQL Server data and couple it with social data from providers like Gannett or DataSift. Um, and moreover, intensity, you can bring all that data together like it was, you know, just essentially picking a menu item. Um, and then essentially we listen to all of those data sources and allow you as the customer to apply your own specific filters, your own ways of um, normalizing and standardizing that data structure to feed into specific algorithms which you developed and apply seamlessly, um, in this case, a sentiment analysis or authority or influence on um, social data to determine, you know, how people are responding to advertisements that were put out onto a number of media channels, um, on TV, broadcast, online, for example. And then that, um, the, the results of that analysis get stored in Hadoop and Elasticsearch and, and uh, HBase, um, and then allows us um, to essentially uh, plug in very sophisticated queries that drive an application. And in this case, this particular sentiment analysis application was a SaaS application built on top of our platform, which provided advertisers a view into how their ads were performing in real time and across media channels. So I want to pick, um, um, you know, TV broadcasts as, as, the, as the source of advertising. I want to pick, you know, online the click, um, you know, uh, um, rich media ads as an advertising source, but how are they performing relative to each other in real time? And how, how are my ads being responded to in each of those domains in terms of sentiment? And who are the most uh, authoritative uh, people that are, that are responding to those ads? Those are the types of things that uh, people are, are wanting to do but weren't able to do with traditional infrastructure and not even able to do with big data infrastructure in a very timely manner. That's where cloud as a deployment model kind of comes in. So let's talk about cloud. Cloud um, on slide 18, kind of segueing into to 19, is our key value proposition. And why? Because we believe that we want to be able to extract the infrastructure and make analytics very easy to deploy, so why worry about the boxes that, it, that your analytic solution needs to live on? Why worry about how to basically spin up software and hardware infrastructure? Let's just focus on the analytics themselves and the applications. We abstract how and where your analytics um, get executed. Just know that it gets executed, and it gets executed right every time, and it scales with your business. So when you look at slide 20, your business may define where that infrastructure needs to, to reside. You may have less sensitive information and you can deploy on Amazon. You may have very highly sensitive information that you've outsourced into a third party managed service data center. Um, or you may have the most sensitive data that has to stay within your own data center. The key thing is we support all three of those use cases and that's key to making um, our enterprise customers happy. So now let's close on the final and most important thing. By 20, segueing into 22. We really need to understand how to make developing applications simple. 
And it starts by understanding what the analytic effect is. Um, knowing that you, you may start with deep, deep analysis with batch analytics, and you may move right into deploying it and operationalizing um, maybe clusters that you've created of, you know, of demographic clusters of customers using batch analytics. You may want to deploy into um, selecting certain customers as they come to you and acting on them based on which cluster they are in real time. And then you may want to iterate on some questions around that in an ad hoc way. Um, you might start with any one of these areas, but the key thing is, is that the constant process that requires touching each of them. And it's never just, you never just do one. And so we take that process, understand it, and embody it into a cloud um, deployment model, which uh, we show in slide 23. So think of the standard cloud infrastructure. It starts at the top, your SaaS applications, your applications, basically. And they get powered by a platform as a service um, layer that abstracts all the infrastructure. That's the past. And down at the bottom is all the compute, storage, and networking that supports you know, operating all of this. But we have that same stack as part of our big data cloud. You know, whether it's public and virtual private or private infrastructure at the bottom, um, we orchestrate our cloud service on any of those domains using a product we call IronFan that helps us orchestrate. It's an open source project, um, and it embodies um, over four years of work in making infrastructure basically seamlessly deployable. And then above that are these three cloud services that we help uh, orchestrate through a domain-specific language called Wukong. It allows you to develop your applications locally on your laptop as if you had the whole infrastructure on that on that laptop. And then once you're happy with how it operates, you can push it into the cloud, into any and all of these three data services, um, analytic services, using Wukong. That's how we we make basically data science made easy for our, for our customers. And that's how we basically drive value in less than 30 days. And so when you look at 524, our deployment model allows you to get up and running in 30 days. You have to start by answering the question of which business problem do you want to attack first? And once you know that, then we do some information discovery knowing what data elements you need to support that business problem. And then we basically recommend a cloud architecture that supports that. And when we, when we launch a project with our customers, we do one data flow end to end, and then we do all the data flows. And then finally, when we're in QA and test, we bring in all of your historic data performance tune, hook up our monitoring systems, and go live. And at the very end part of that process, we just manage that infrastructure 24 by 7, 365 with a virtual knot. People make sure that your system is always up and running. You're allowed to update it through a staging process. It's very controlled. And then from there, you become completely empowered to do as many applications as you want. And so, you know, basically the world is your oyster. Whatever industry that you're in on slide 25, I don't care which industry you're in. I don't care which business problem you want to address. This type of design pattern works across them all. And Rich, that is basically the InfoChip story in a nutshell. Um, we're very excited as a company to be part of this transformative industry, and we're seeing huge impact. Well, thanks for that, Jim. You know, a couple questions come to mind. You know, maybe I missed it, but do you guys operate your own cloud in addition to using services like Amazon or other um, IP providers? Yeah, so, you know, that's a great question. And the quick answer is we are a cloud. So that means uh, basically we are a managed service. The infrastructure we maintain, we have people that make sure that your uh, your you know, compute infrastructure, your storage infrastructure, your network infrastructure is up and running. You don't have to worry about it. And so, you know, ultimately that's the high umbrella. We're a cloud service provider. Underneath the covers, we have basically the ability to leverage, you know, the commodity infrastructure as a service providers like an Amazon. Also, you know, some people that you may or may not be aware of or the, you know, the audience may not know, like, the joints of the world, the HP clouds, the profit bricks, the cloud provider USAs, the cloud sigmas. This is a whole slew of infrastructure service providers 
who are purpose-built for high performance, high availability that live in data centers like Paramark, Savvis, you know, SwitchSnap, Telex, you know, Cirrus One, et cetera, Equinix, um, where we live as well. And we leverage those infrastructure as a service providers um, as, as elastic clouds underneath us. Now, to get specific, we do have our own cloud infrastructure, and that requires having the ability to operate on vSphere, for example, or on OpenStack, on our own, um, you know, our own hardware stack. And we do that to support customers who have very high demand SLAs, who have specific requirements that require, you know, us being in kind of the same kind of elastic cloud environment that they embrace, that they're using internally. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, um, and, and, and I was curious about, uh, you know, you said you're using the, the Cloudera uh, platform as the basis for this. Is, is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, yeah. And now as they add innovation, right, I mean, I was just with those guys this week and they added search. Uh, how do you bring that to your customers? Yeah, it's a great question. So when you think about the, the design pattern that we support and the framework um, that's required, you know, our, our value add as a cloud service provider is no, not much different than like an Amazon or a Rackspace where you have to be really good at taking the best-in-class technologies and making sure they're unified, integrated, and consumable as a cloud service. So that requires kind of cloud operations um, technologies allow us to spin up these clouds very quickly in single-tenant or multi-tenant environments and apply, you know, configuration and customization with very little operational staff. And so our secret sauce is essentially in that domain where we can orchestrate a cloud era Hadoop cluster as well as a NoSQL cluster as well as an in-stream processing cluster all integrated together with just the touch of a button with, with something that looks as simple as a sentence, how we define that infrastructure, then behind that, all the complexity of spinning that up and then managing it is made simple. And that's our value added. And then on top of that, being able to see all that infrastructure through the lens of an application developer through a, through a abstraction layer for coders is the other part that makes you know, this, these technologies easy to consume. So when a cloud era offers up a new technology, we have to be very responsive in looking at that and embracing it. And then ultimately, when it makes sense, deploying it as part of our cloud services. So you know, we're very mindful of the launch that Mike Olson has made and the impact that he's making with Impala and his search project, uh, his, his search um, launch as well. And we'll see other future launches of other technologies that the industry is going to contribute. That being said, we have to be opinionated. We have to pick the technologies when they're mature, when they're ready for our customers, because our customers are Fortune 1000. And we have to do a lot of work with our partners, such as Mike uh, and Cloudera, make sure that it's well integrated into our uh, cloud service offerings and that it's easy to make and launch those um, without disrupting current applications and current services. Well, terrific. Well, Jim, I guess I should ask, you know, where, where, where do you know, you've, you cover kind of the gamut of different industries and verticals and such. Uh, where do you anticipate the greatest growth is going to come from um, for your company? That's a great question, Rich. I think when, Generally speaking, you know, each of these potential industries, uh, big data enabled industries is, is going to see huge disruption and opportunity. There's not, again, not one vertical or one business use case that can't take advantage of adding more data sources, uh, apply more nimble technologies, um, big data technologies to shorten the design or, you know, data to insight um, kind of uh, timeline. And so with, you know, if I to dig down in each of these industries, I'd say, well, of course, financial services is the, the largest in terms of IT spend. You know, sitting right alongside that would probably be manufacturing in terms of its pure IT spend. But I think the, if the world wants to see a greater impact on how these technologies can be uh, applied. And so there's a, there's a huge kind of, I don't know, uh, 
human aspect to uh, deploying big data and health, you know, to reduce uh, the cost of, of, of providing, you know, health services to advance the ability to solve, you know, a lot of uh, life science challenges, you know, around cancer or what have you. And so we, we would love to see, you know, some breakthroughs in, in health and life sciences as well as enabling, you know, current, you know, banking infrastructure, communications infrastructure, and even reducing costs for utilities. So I, I personally like to see some, some movement happening within health. It's going to require a lot of work because there's a lot of governments there. I'd like to see, you know, helping government uh, reduce costs so that we as a nation, you know, here in the United States could, could see some, you know, immediate benefits. Um, and, and, of course, as a company, I'm going to be very focused around uh, the big spenders like financial services, like manufacturing. Well, terrific. You know, this has been very helpful, Jim. I got a lot better idea of what you guys are, are doing and where you're going. So uh, I, I want to thank you once again for coming on the show today. Thanks a lot for having us out, Rich. Really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. You bet. You bet. Okay, folks, that's it for the Rich Report. Stay tuned for more news and information on the world of big data. <laughs>